so you're a musician more specifically you're a guitarist okay and you might be saying dave why do you bring this up i'll get to that in a very quick second so as you're playing your guitar right a handful of the strings on the guitar end up you know breaking or what have you i'm not a musician a musician so please excuse me if my example or my metaphor is not exactly the best however think about the strings of a guitar right when you strike a certain part of a string does it not vibrate throughout the rest of that string throughout the rest along the entire guitar so what I'm trying to say here is this. Think about the dimension that we're in at this very moment, right? We are allegedly in or arguably in the third dimension. Think about the other dimensions, universes, whatever you want to think of or perceive it as, different simulations, whatever you want to call it. Think of each part of the dimension as a different part of a string on that guitar, right? So when nuclear bombs, excuse me, are exploded, in the third dimension, it sets off a resonating vibrational state and frequency that disseminates into the other uh, dimensions below it and above it. So before I do that, I just want to give a very quick shout out to Saul, Tatiana, uh, Alexa, uh, sorry, Alex and Philip. Let me just make sure I said that cor uh, correct. Yeah, Philip and Alex. Thank you so much to all three of you for watching the show. I know there's a lot more of you that want to... Um, that want to be shouted out, I will be getting to that very shortly. Now, I do want to say as well that we do have a Patreon. It does help support the show, especially uh, in times when, you know, censorship and all that is going on. But anyways, let's get right into it. Dark Operation, good night, Gracie. So, here's what we're going to first be taking a look at that we have to fully understand. The organization of the Zodiac, and in brackets, Grand Deception. Now, why do I say that? We're going to be mixing a handful of different esoteric, um, I guess you could say technological, and intelligence-based operations in all of this, because we're going to see that there's a massive deception coming up. Now, why do I call this dark operation good night gracie well i certainly didn't make it up that i can tell you this was a covert military operation that is put in place that is still in place in case of any esoteric portals being opened but it's far more greater than that however let's take a look at this right here alcyonbells.com and i quote there is a pattern that anybody who's been down the ufo rabbit hole will recognize being used on the general public with again i can't say it i've written about this pattern the 20-year cycle that is similar to the honeymoon pattern of a wife beater or psychopath slash narcissist the one where you get gaslighted jerked around and mentally messed with the carrot dangle only to have it all pulled out from under you because really it was all a house of cards made on lies and disinformation to hide a great big something end quote now he does mention covid i'm not trying to get into that especially as you all know for the sake of this show that's not the point here however the next thing i want to take a look at right here is this article from thedebrief.org and then we're going to get into the really really good stuff so take a look at this folks new material able to withstand extreme temperatures discovered totally by accident now i'm not here to judge as to whether or not this was an accident or not but let's take a look right here an extraordinary and accidental accidental discovery by australian researchers of a new material that does not contract or expand under extreme temperatures called zero thermal expansion has the potential to revolutionize aerospace and medical technology technology. It also shatters to pieces what everyone learned about matter in fifth grade science class and quote now we can talk about how you know public academia is trying to distort this and we see all that but what we have to note here is that this was only released as yesterday as of the day i'm recording this june 15th 2021 maybe these scientists on a public level accidentally discovered this material if you will or maybe there was a scientist that was inserted in there that found or inserted the missing part of a certain algorithm or formula that could allow for these type of revelations to occur which would then allow for the discovery of such materials and things like this now let's take a look very quickly what is zero thermal expansion zero thermal expansion often abbreviated as zte is a specific property of a material that relates to the conditions in which the material does not contract or expand in size of volume all right however elementary school science curriculum teaches everyone that changes in temperature cause changes in the physical properties materials that possess forms of zte are extremely rare and the ones that do only remain in their original state in very specific and small ranges of temperature and quote now does this not remind you of something folks does this not remind you of the cigar shaped ufos that are seen in the sky coming and going to and from earth to the moon into space you name it whether it's the knocked off in the dark fleet or solar warden that's not the point the point is notice how the craft expand and then contract very very slowly 
and substantially, but it's almost as if nothing's been affected. There's no noise, there's no propulsion system, nothing like that, but that's not even the, the, the best part here. Let's take a look at this particular screenshot I took from the Dolce book by Branton. Let's take a look here. So furthermore, Norio Hayakawa contends that the Grand Deception, again, going back to the first article I referenced in this episode, will immediately follow a rapid series of shocking, incredible events in succession, beginning with a Russia-backed Arab Confederacy's attempt to invade Israel, simultaneous worldwide earthquakes, worldwide stock market crash, and a sudden mysterious evacuation of a segment of the planet's population, all of which will cum culminate in a quick official formation of a new world order based in Europe that will last for seven years upon its deception. Now, a lot of people say, okay, you know, you could say, Dave, the, you know, the, the Great Reset, the New World Order is coming in with COVID right now, but what does this have to do with anything? Well, I'm very glad you folks asked because we need to understand what this has to do with Operation Zodiac. So Zodiac is another abbreviation for MJ-12, the Majestic 12, right? Which was established allegedly under Truman or Eisenhower. It's kind of hard to say when it was officially formulated, but again, we now have, you know, certain abbreviations and confirmations in a very slight and soft disclosure format from people like Lou Elizondo. However, let's take a look at this right here, and this is some research notes from our friend Ria and I'd like to thank him very much for this. Zodiac also seems to be another name for MJ-12, which are 12 signs of the Zodiac. That is a surface answer as well, too. But it is part of a larger group of operations to, uh, to continue the American government in case of it being crippled somehow. Again, continuity of government, that doesn't really sound that far out there. However, take a look at this, folks. The Organization of the Zodiac, or Oz, is the military wing of the Rockefeller Foundation, which came to the forefront in the waning years of the United Earth Sphere Alliance. Oz separated as a vision of the Alliance military and served as a form of special forces or black ops group. Officially, they were known as the Special Mobile Suit Unit, more commonly known as Specials. However, it is a secret operation part of a larger group, but this is the most important thing here. Richard Duke, an alleged founding member of the CE protocols, if you will, to explore demons and things like this, was also secretly involved with opening portals. And Collins Elite, which, again, we'll get into it later on, is the reason why the CIA started exploring remote viewing and MK Ultra. They were tasked with investigating Parsons for allegedly opening the portal through occult rituals. Now, let me explain very clearly what I'm trying to say here, because I want to make this very, very, uh, I guess you could say, uh, significant. So, Collins Elite was a small group within the CIA below the fusion cell, and for those who don't know what the fusion cell is, I encourage you to head back to previous episodes to check it out. Now, Collins Elite was a small group below the fusion cell, metaphorically and literally from an underground perspective in Langley, Virginia, that was assembled having to do with opening portals. But, who was part of Collins Elite? Let's take a look at this right here. The group believes, uh, Collins Elite believes, that... Our purported alien visitors are, in reality, deceptive demons and fallen angels. They are the minions of Satan who are reaping and enslaving our very souls. Now, before I go on, I want to make something very clear. I'm not trying to make this religion uh, religious or spiritual. However, we have to define the perception in which the description of demons, demonology, and all these things are perceived. However... Let's take a look. Who was part of Collins Elite? Jack Parsons, Ron Hubbard, uh, Ron Hubbard, excuse me, Alistair Crowley, Ray Bosch, Angli uh, an Anglican pastor, and many others as well. Richard Duke, you name it. Now, why were these people so significant? They were significant because they were part of the culmination of a portal that the CIA could not open. And this was when the CIA realized they had to culminate the search, particularly within Operation Desert Storm, that was overseen by Dick Cheney, who again is part of the military industrial complex, who would be one of those people that is familiar with such instances and occurrences of what's going on on the extra EBE or extraterrestrial biological entity agenda. So they had to rush on a human level, the Americans, for the Stargate in Iraq that we have spoken about before. However, what ended up happening was that Collins Elite opened this portal previously, and this is also corresponding with what Lou Elizondo said when one of his superiors at the Pentagon when he was in the ATIP unit if I'm not mistaken, if I if my facts are correct, that he was told, and again, I put the video up on Patreon for members and all that too, and you could see it publicly, I believe, as well. They were told 
Mr. Elizondo was told some of these craft should not be pursued because they are demonic. So the question becomes, some of these beings are what are called walk-ins, right, coming from different dimensions, and all of these different apparatuses that seem to occur. However, when Lou Elizondo was asked about Zodiac, which I'm going to be putting again on the member section that will correspond to other data points of footage that we'll be seeing too, he said he could not comment on it. So you might be saying, okay, Dave, let's bring this back full circle. You made the connection of the different dimensions, right? So what are you saying that these walk-ins are demons, or are they some type of entity that seems to be, I guess you could say, coming from a different apparatus of not another dimension, but maybe a parallel dimension or a parallel universe, because there is in fact a stark difference. So let's take a look at this right here. This briefing is classified, however, it has become unclassified. Info.publicintelligence.net. NORAD and U.S. NORTHCOM Operation Plans Summary. Now, NORAD, again, is responsible for overseeing and allegedly is one of the main areas in which leads to the d deep underground military bases as well as the subterranean global network, but is responsible for tracking UFOs. And it also is the story I've told many times on my live stream where I've said, you know, Carl Sagan went to NORAD and they said to him, uh, sorry, he asked one of the officers there, uh, how many UFO sightings do you have and they said well we don't call them ufos we call them uct's unidentified correlating targets and then carl sagan says well how many of those do you get and they said thousands every single day but they're told by the cia to ignore it which again i know some of you may be saying dave this sounds like a broken record but folks we need to make the overall connection of the way in which these what i call and refer to data points of different parts of the same timeline that metaphorically relate to the example of the guitar string within the vibrational dimensions that seem to ascend or descend we have to make the connection where we see them not where we see fit but where we see them to be appropriating in the way in which could find some revelation that we could infer to right so let's take a look right here aerospace warning aerospace control and maritime warning so conduct military operations to anticipate deter prevent and defeat threats to the united states its territories and interests within assigned area of responsibility provide civil support and other assistance to u.s civil authorities as directed now take a look at some of the forward regions the homeland and the different approaches take a look at the north pacific here the north pacific ocean right in the north atlantic ocean interesting how a lot of the sightings of ufos have been seen within the forward regions which also correspond to the OPNAC personnel document of the MJ-12 SOS-1 booklet if I, or SOS-01 booklet excuse me that shows ultimately most of the unidentified UCT sightings that are not man controlled that are extraterrestrially controlled right are in the North Pacific Ocean but interestingly enough do you know where Ron Hubbard Alistair Crowley and a handful of others allegedly opened the portals to in the North Pacific Ocean interesting that NORAD also if we can see here look at this document right here which has been declassified shows the North Pacific Ocean is also a great place for approaches to the homeland it can't get any more clear than that folks and I'm not even kidding I mean at this point how much more do we need to see Right. However, with that being said, let's also take a look at something right here. Capforcanada.com. I'd like to thank my friend Riel for this as well, too. U.S. lawmakers pass bill investigating Trudeau government China relations. Now, again, we're not trying to get political here, but let's understand the overall concept of the different materials that were found in the article that we just referenced right here from the debrief.org. Where were most of these materials allegedly found? They were found in Canada. They were found 180 kilometers, okay, from the 215 children that were buried. And for those on Patreon, you'll know that one. 180 keeps popping up again folks and i'm not trying to say it to you know lead anybody on but again we may have found the answer as we discussed on patreon but we're still working on that the 1.8 the 180 the ties to new york all of that whole thing there that i can't discuss publicly but let's take a look here a bill recently a bill that recently passed the u.s senate with strong two-party support would force the biden administration to lay out plans for working with allies on china related issues now here we go the White House will have 90 days to publish a strategy explaining where it agrees and disagrees with Canada on Chinese issues, end quote, or on uh, China issues. Here's the thing, folks. I want to make something very clear. Not the Chinese people, the regime, as I say in the news episodes, the CCP. However, here's what's interesting. This frightens me as a Canadian living in Canada at this very moment. But a lot of the portals that seem to be opening from the CIA have to uh, correspond 1.8 miles 
all right, perpendicular to the cave within Canada that is constantly guarded by Canadian military, that you will receive a $1 million fine for even approaching that particular land that was then, again, purchased by the federal government of Canada, which it wasn't allowed to be, but anyways, you know, they kind of pushed that aside. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at, too, is that we have to understand that this cave seems to be a training ground for Canadian Chinese officials. The question becomes, have the CCP infiltrated with another uh, breed of extraterrestrials into this cave, if you will, that has allowed for the access or the, I guess, rogue access, the unofficial or unapproved access, not into the deep underground military bases, even lower into the subterranean global network is the question then becomes, is Trudeau formulating the orchestration with certain aspects of the Chinese military or government of the CCP? Not all aspects, but some. Is there a formulation happening here that will allow for China to use that cave or the CCP to use that cave to gain more extraterrestrial technology within there? Now, you might be saying, okay, Dave, how do you know this? Well, let's take a look. The star.com, Ontario government giving $10 million to help locate unmarked graves of indigenous children who died at resident at residential schools this was posted 24 hours ago as of the time i'm recording this but let's take a look right here now ontario for those who don't know is the province that tends to have the most economic structure power and influence within all of canada you have some other major cities like vancouver and montreal but you know it's not as as, as strong as toronto and ontario and all that now let's take a look at this right here that's why our government is partnering with indigenous communities to address the loss of generations who are no longer with us and the continued loss experienced by residential school survivors and their families, end quote. Why do I bring this up? There are calls all across Canada, and I could tell you right now as a Canadian, for every single residential school to be dug up, not just within Ontario, but within all of Canada. Why is this making people like Trudeau nervous? Because he understands, not that he's let in on this, not that he is some grand conspirator, but he understands that these digging up of the children may also, I guess we could say, um, formulate... A connection that should not be made on a public level the same way in which they suppress us at the public academic level within you know the stem community science technology engineering and mathematics and so he understands that digging all of these kids out from all of these residential schools is the last thing that he would want to happen trudeau because ultimately there are basically kids at every single school and each single i guess we could say set of kids if you want to call it very unfortunately and i have to watch my words here because it is a, a public episode not a patreon one every set of kids laid within these um these residential schools that's that are being dug up from individualistic stories are then being censored because they're finding more kids but they cannot report on it and then on top of that what's then happening after that is the school where all these kids are buried all these residential schools all across the country are again 1.8 miles 1.8 kilometers 1.8 degrees 180 here 180 there perpendicular invest uh, an investment was made all having to do with the 180 1.8 that whole concept there right we can also tie that into the 1.8 hertz frequencies that seem to suppress the old overall Schumann resonance of a different, you know, I guess, walk-in uh, entity of certain grays, if you will, but that's for another episode. So I would like to thank all of you for watching. Let me know what you think about the different opening of the portals, the different cover-ups, and the different connections here, because ultimately what we're going to find too is that when we look at the investment of BlackRock, which is a massive investment company, again, thanks to Riel and Genius, what we're going to find too is that the investments they ha BlackRock has are in companies that those companies have subsidiaries and dummy companies invested in overseas in accounts in Cyprus, the Mediterranean, Switzerland, you name it, and the Caribbean in order to cover up a lot of the construction and excavation of these children in Canada. So interesting how all of this is tying together. Let me know what you folks think and we'll catch you very soon. Cheers.